win over Carolina. Denver is the current favorite to win the West Division, the AFC West, of course, at 3-2 to two odds, according to Westgate Superbook. This would be their sixth straight West title, Kansas City. Has the second best odds, but you can see here, eight to five, followed by Oakland at seven to two, and San Diego is the underdog at eight to one. The coach, Herm, back in the house. Mm. Herm, Denver, mile high, are they a lock? Oh, I don't think a lock. Yeah. Um, best quarterback in the division we know is Phillip Rivers, especially if you can keep him protected. I think they've done some things on the offseason. Allen will be back to find receiver. Uh, Melvin Gordon, uh, Good football player, but it's kind of ironic. Didn't score a touchdown last year. Uh, I would hope he could score a touchdown this year, right? <laughs> the Gates is coming back, but he's, he's getting a little long in the tooth. But San Diego will be much improved because of the quarterback, if they can keep him standing. Uh, Denver, I think, is a team that is going through transition. When you think about they lost some players, Malik Jackson being one, Trevathan Marshall on defense. Uh, they have two uh, new offensive linemen in Nakoon. Uh, and Stevens that'll play there. So that offensive line will be switched around. They lost two quarterbacks, by the way, on the offseason. They bring in Mark Sanchez. They're hoping they get the Mark Sanchez that won four playoff games on the road, not the Mark Sanchez that has thrown 86 touchdown passes and turned the ball over 108 times. They hope they're not get that guy. They got out and Paxton Lynch. Uh, uh, I don't know if he is ready to play uh, right now. I think he's a guy that, you know, maybe a year from now he might be ready to play. I like some of their draft picks. Uh, Devontae Booker, I love the guy. I think he's a he's an older running back out of Utah State. I like the Raiders. I think the Raiders are much improved, especially what they did on the offseason. Uh, they went out and signed some free agents. Uh, uh, Irvin, who comes from Seattle. Uh, Sean Smith, a corner. But they were in, in their division He from Kansas City. Now they got two nice corners. They have the ability to rush. Um, you look at their offense. Uh, I like the quarterback. I think the quarterback is, is, is going to play well again this year. Uh, Crabtree played well last mm -hmm. year for him. Uh, he found his way. Cooper kind of died off at the end, but I think the Raiders are an upcoming team. I think Kansas City is a team. Uh, Houston is, is, is might be not available early, but they get Jamal Charles back. Mm -hmm. That helps their offense. Yeah. They probably have the best tight end uh, in the division. Not counting out Gates, but Gates is getting long. He's on the back nine now. Uh, Kelsey, Macklin played well. Uh, their defense will be good. Uh, so I think it's a, a good division. I really do. I, I, I just think it's very competitive. Uh, but I don't think the Denver Broncos are a lock by any stretch mm -hmm. of imagination. No. Yeah, especially Not a lock. quarterback situation. Stephen A. Well, I love the fact that Elway moved up to get Paxton Lynch. I'll give him a lot of credit for it. Um, I also loved what San Diego did, shocking everybody by taking Joey Boser number three overall and drafting a, an eventual replacement to Antonio Gates at the tight end spot with Hunter Henry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm st I still would have liked to have seen them invest more in offensive linemen because you got to keep Phillip Rivers upright, coach, and I think yes. that, that was something that needed to be a priority, and that's not necessarily the case. Right. What I love in the AFC West is Oakland. And the reason why I love Oakland is because they got this kid called Joseph who's considered a heavy hitter and it feeds into the mystique of the silver and black. We know what Khalil Mack represents and what he brings to the table. But if you've got somebody behind him that's, uh, that's a hit man per se, now you're feeding into the mystique of the silver and black, which is what made them so successful in years past. And that's what I really, really like. And I love this kid, Shalik Calhoun, out of Michigan State, because, Skip, he was somebody that jumped off my screen at times, you know, when I watched yep. him this year as well. So I look at it from, from the standpoint, obviously they, there's more that they could do offensively. You got Derek Carr. You got Amari Cooper. You're seeing some of the things that they're trying to do. I get all of that. But losing a Charles Woodson, getting a guy like Carl Joe back there behind Khalil Mack and feeding into the mystique that is the Oakland Raiders. Plus, you're drafting a versatile defensive guy in Shalik Calhoun. I think you're feeding into that mystique. I think that matters because what you want to do if you're the Oakland Raiders, you want to know that when folks come into the stadium to play you, they know you're going to put some wood on them. I think those are the kind of thing that galvanizes Raider Nation, which ultimately inspires this, this young crop of, of, of guys for the Raiders because one of the reasons they want it to be a Raider is because they feed into this kind of stuff. So the more you feed into that imagery, particularly with Jack Del Rio as your coach, I think that helps the Raiders. And I think that out of all the teams in the AFC West, I would give the edge to Oakland in terms of what transpired on draft day. Mm. 
back to the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. They lost too many good players on defense to dominate this division anymore. They are going to fall back to earth on defense. Not great players, but good ones, and you listed a bunch of yeah. them. Now, I, I love what the Raiders continue to do, loading up that roster with nothing but but talent and, and heavy hitting talent. I, I love too. yeah, a lot speed. of speed. Uh, Stephen Maybe A. Murray's yeah. all right. Okay, but. They're going to go as far as that young quarterback yes. takes them. And, and, and he tailed off a little bit. He did. He did. He did. Carr. He did. So I'm not sure about that. Now I'm back to Herm's opening comment in this segment. The best quarterback in the division is still in San Diego. Love him. And he's not too old. He's Love 34. Him. You know, he's kind of a, you know, he, he didn't have much of a year last year. They didn't have much of a year. Four and 12. Yes. Couldn't protect they, they lost Eric Weddle. They couldn't protect him, but they added Brandon Amebane and Casey Hayward and Dwight Lowry, and I like them all, and Travis Benjamin on the other side is a deep threat. Yes. And Stephen A. brought it up. I love Joey Bosa. I wanted my Cowboys to take him early on. Yes. And, and Hunter Henry, I watched a lot. He's an absolute stud. He's got some, he's got hey. some red flag concerns, too, but it's well, okay. Well, he's got some, but you know what? He's tall and strong and no, he makes I, I plays like, like crazy. He's a good player. And, and you put him player. with the aging Antonio, and, and you, yeah. you got uh, Travis Benjamin flying up the side, and you, you point out Keenan Allen's coming back, Stevie Johnson's coming back, Melvin Gordon's got breakaway speed. All of a sudden, yeah. you, you got firepower, man. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not counting out the San Diego Chargers to rise up and win this division next year. It'll be very competitive. Yeah. Uh, San Diego always plays Denver good for yeah. some reason. They just have a knack of playing Denver good. And, um, you know, it's a shame because Phillip Rivers is in the back nine of his career, and you're watching a guy that has really been one of the top quarterbacks in yes. the league. Uh, you you want to get? I, I, I love to see him get back in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of those guys that he makes you he makes you angry when you play him because he's that feisty guy. Mm -hmm. He's always saying. So I can remember, you know, competing against him as a coach. I love competing against Phillip. I love the guy. I just loved him to death because he, he brought energy to the game. You know, generally a quarterback doesn't bring energy to the game. He brings energy because when you watch him on the sideline and you watch him in the game, he's getting after guys. He's getting after defense guys. He's competing. And you hopefully they can protect this guy because he is a really good quarterback. Did he talk trash to you on the sideline? No, he was good. We had a great oh. relationship. Okay. We really do. He's, uh, he's, 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 he's one of the best. I, I love him. Did and you ever I, talk I trash at all on the sideline? Oh, me? As a coach? Yes. As a coach? Yes. Uh, no. Just... <laughs> A few, uh, a few, just a few things I would say. Just sometimes, just uh -huh. subtle, uh -huh. subtle. Class just subtle. Now, as a cornerback, a whole different story. Yeah, oh. I, I got a whole different story. Yeah, to Drew oh, Pearson, or Tony Hill. Sure Drew's yeah. 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 my guy. Drew was my guy. Ahmad Rashad, I saw them all. Yeah, I saw them all. Definitely a competitive division, though. This one's going to be fun. Herm, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, coach. Good to see you, my friend. Mm -hmm. You look good without oh, that tie on, man. Does. man. I, like that 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 look, I like that look. He looks you know? handsome. I yeah, like he it. Looks, we call it suave. Yes, mm. very suave. <laughs> Rico suave. <laughs> Doc Rivers says he wants the big three back for another run next season. But is that the best for the Clippers? Crazy. I wasn't paranoid, okay. but I was concerned. But after their 32-point mm -hmm. win, you were concerned. So now, yeah. after last night, game two, how much trouble San Antonio in? Stephen A. Smith. I'm just speaking from my heart. You can say I have too big a heart for my Spurs. I, I think they're in big trouble now. I thought this would be a home and home kind of series, which is why I went Spurs in seven to win game seven at home. Four home games they would win, three home games Thunder would win. As you well know, these two teams have faced off twice before in recent memory. 2012, as you point out, 2014. Both times my Spurs won games one and two at home both times and, and won them fairly handily and went to Oklahoma City with, with a lot of confidence and, and got crushed in Oklahoma City. Maybe the script will flip this time, but I'm not sure about that because obviously in 2012, the Thunder put them out of their, their misery in six games at Oklahoma City. And then in 2014, my Spurs won one of the more miraculous road wins in Spurs history, maybe the most was game six at Oklahoma City in 2014 on the way to the title. And as you remember, Matt Bonner started that game for my Spurs. Tony Parker's hamstring went and he couldn't go in the second half. So Corey Joseph and Patty Mills played the whole second half and somehow my Spurs won in overtime. It was an upset. Ginobili made a huge three at, at the end of regulation. Kawhi had a huge uh, chase down block on Russell Westbrook in overtime and took the ball away from him. 
It was just one of those nights. Tim Duncan played huge in overtime. I'm not sure this team has that in it now. This team's better than that team was in 2014. But now you're going up to their lair. It's probably the loudest place. I know Oracle is loud too. But listen, that's, that's a thunder den up there. It's, it's a thunder dome. And I just don't know. I, I'm just not sure they can win one of these two games. And if they don't, they're going to come home down three to one. And you want to talk about climbing a Everest, Everest at that point, that's going to be tough. So I don't love their chances now. I do not believe that the Thunder are going to win both games in Oklahoma City. I think the Spurs will find a way to steal one. That's why I think this series is going seven games. Um, you know, if the Thunder end up winning and I'm wrong, I would be happy because I'd rather see them against OKC than San Antonio. I've been on the record Golden saying State. that. Yeah. I just, I, I, I guess Golden yeah, State, right, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, I, I'm just not sure that they can pull it off yep. uh, because the fluidity of their offense is something that I, 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 I religiously question. And, but I will tell you this. San Antonio, look. Skip Bayless, it's nothing, I don't want to say there's nothing to worry about. Of course, there's a lot to be worried about. But San Antonio won 26 games on the road this year. San Antonio is fully capable of going into a visiting team's, you know, uh, backyard and beating them, even if it's Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. I have no doubt in my mind about that. And so when I look at it from that perspective, uh, you got to remember, Oklahoma City has had some tough games at home this year as well. I, it wouldn't surprise me at all, San Antonio, if San Antonio ended up stealing a game in Oklahoma City. I, be, I never was of the mindset that both teams would fully protect their home court. I fully expected each team to steal a game on the other's home turf before this series was over. And nothing, uh, no, no, nothing has happened to change my mind. Even though I thought that San Antonio would win last night, I sort of found myself believing that Oklahoma City could come back and steal a game five in San Antonio, possibly winning a game six and then forcing a game seven. But that was my mentality. I think ultimately what it comes down to is that San Antonio and Oklahoma City will each steal one from the other's home court and it will force a game seven in San Antonio. We'll see what happens. Here's my fear. So far, by his standards, Russell Westbrook has not been Russell Westbrook. And I assume he will turn into that guy, that superstar in Oklahoma City. At least one game. At least, At one, least game. one game. So far, he's 16 for 44, 36% from the field, one of nine from three. I don't think that will continue. I hope I'm wrong. Durant has been Durant. He played big, played big down the stretch last night. Ibaka's got a hot hand. He's made five out of 11 threes so far. Scares me. Steven Adams is playing huge against my Spurs. He's averaging 13 and a half rebounds a game and, and showing some athleticism, dare I say, in the paint. So these are the things that scare me right now that Coach Pop is going to have to well, push some levers, let's... pull some, you know, some strings here to make this different. Yeah, but talk to me about last night. I mean, the fact is, I, ain't, cause I don't even count game one. That was such an annihilation. There's nothing about what either. transpired in game one. I don't care what numbers anybody for OKC put up. They were down by 43. So chances are things were accumulated during garbage time. I'm not going by that. Last night, I would take far more seriously. And I do recognize the athleticism of Steven Adams' his willingness to defend and rebound, et cetera, giving you about 37 minutes. I respect that. But I'm looking at him and Ibaka getting flat out abused by LaMarcus Aldridge. Everybody Billy Donovan puts on him. And and he won't, for some reason, he won't double LaMarcus Aldridge. No. Nope. He, 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 he had better find a way to figure that out. Uh, but then again, he may not have to because if you're still finding a way to maintain, to stay you tight are. in games yeah. without doubling LaMarcus Aldridge, then why change? Why change? But if you don't, then Kawhi Leonard's got to take advantage uh, of, you know, of, of his man. You got Somebody's got to yep. help out LaMarcus Aldridge to do something to draw attention away from LaMarcus. So they, they, they've got to do something. Right. They've got to do something they're, they're to help. They're doubling Kawhi a lot, and they're letting LaMarcus go ahead and get his two-point shots. I don't know, yeah. but all I know that last night, just for the big-picture perspective, early on, my Spurs were down 13. Early third quarter, down 11. Early fourth quarter, down 9. That, that was all thunder last night. I'm sorry. They, they just looked like the superior team last night, even in San Antonio. Yeah. Okay. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. We shall see. It feels like it's 3-1, to one, but that's just me. Because yeah. it's you. Because you're yeah, emotional. That's what you go through. Yep.
Game go, three, Kate? Friday, 9.30 on ESPN. It'll be good. Coming up, could LeBron and Durant be on the same team next season? One of the best players of all time would like to see that happen. We'll tell you who that is when we come back. First take, just getting started.